Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since my last video. You guys know every time I travel I have to like disassemble my studio here, my lights, my cameras, take that stuff with me and then I have to reassemble it. So uh, I'm finally back. Also do me a favor and like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, you know, help support your girl, okay? Leave a comment, uh, any bit helps. So today we're going to talk about the devil and his works. This is actually something that uh, I feel the Lord has put on me. There's somebody out here who needs to hear this message. I actually, I had read, so we're, we're going to be reading from this book, just a little chapter in here. The book is uh, Spiritual Counsels by Father John of Kronstadt. Uh, this is select passages from My Life in Christ. And um, I had, I, I had, God had put it on me that I needed to reread this, right? This specific chapter because of things that have been going on in my own personal life for the past month or so. And, um, I typed up a little paragraph here and I posted it online. Somebody commented and was like, you know, I needed to hear that just at this time. This is some kind of divine timing. So I thought, you know what? I think everybody could benefit from hearing this, whether you're a Christian or not. Um, I Do me a favor and just listen to the chapter because even if you're not a Christian, you can benefit from what it teaches us about anger. And what I would like to say is, this is something I have been really struggling with, like um, wanting to get revenge on people who have hurt you, like, you know, that spirit of hostility, of vindictiveness that is not who we are, it's not part of us, but, you know, the devil tries to attack us in this way, and this is something that I think a lot more people struggle with than they would like to admit, so... I, uh, I had to put the glasses on. I apologize. <laughs> this is the only time you guys are going to get to see me wearing glasses. I, and I wouldn't be doing it unless I actually had to wear them to read because I can't stand I can't stand glasses. You guys are so lucky that you get to see this. This is the first and only time <laughs> that I will be doing this. But uh, the chapter is called The Devil and His Works. And this is so important. I, I really needed to reread this because... You know, it's so easy to forget the subtle ways in which the devil attacks us, especially people who are doing God's work, who are trying to be good Christians. Like, the devil doesn't have to attack people who are already his, if that makes sense. So, uh, the devil takes an enormous part in the sins of men. Therefore, let none consider himself cast away, even if he be a great sinner. His sins are greatly the fault of the devil. Turn at once to Jesus Christ for forgiveness. He is the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. So this is something really important to consider. If somebody has hurt you and you're angry and you feel that desire to like lash out at them, to hurt them back, stop yourself and remind yourself that if that person sinned against you, it was mostly the devil who caused them to do it. Hate the sin, not the sinner. Remember that that person is a child of God and that God loves them. They're precious to God. You cannot attack God's precious people, you know? <laughs> That's seriously, think about that. Like, I really want people to, as they listen to this, really think about it. And you can pause it. You can come back and re-listen to certain passages. I know I have to reread them also because it's so powerful, you know, and sometimes so convicting. A man, this, this, and I know that this, somebody listening to this, this makes sense to you. You know this to be the truth. Nobody has to tell you it's true. It literally just stands on its own, which is what the truth is. It doesn't need justification. A man is sometimes too irritable and too evil to be so of his own accord. He becomes so through the most zealous endeavors of the devil. I know you know that's true. I know that you've felt that. I know there's been times where you have been irritable and there's something like briefly, it feels like something briefly possesses you. 
I know that you guys know this. Only watch yourself or others at the time of irritability and wickedness when you yourself or anyone else would wish to destroy the person inimical to you, really or mentally. Compare this state with that which follows it, and you will say to yourself, no, this seems quite a different man from him who, not long ago, was so full of evil and rage. This man is the one out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. In him, there is not even a shadow of the former wickedness, the former foolishness. Does that not ring true to you? How many times have you experienced this, whether it's with you know, a family member, a co-worker, a friend, where, you know, either they, it happens to them or it happens to you, where you just are overcome and you lash out with this hostility. And then it's immediately followed by regret, shame, sorrow, you know, as if you didn't even want to do that, right? Or that something else, like, influenced you. And that's what I want people to understand that that's actually what is happening. Some deny the existence of evil spirits, but the phenomena in human life such as this clearly prove it, I agree. Besides, a man subjected to irritability and breathing malice clearly feels the presence of a hostile evil power in his breast. It produces in the soul the opposite of that which the Lord says of his own presence. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. By the presence of the evil spirit, one is made to feel ill at ease and depressed both in body and soul. And I know that you guys have felt this when you are experiencing that heartbreak or hurt, suffering, you know, when you are, uh, when some kind of anger is aroused against a, a friend, a loved one, um, you feel that oppression. You do feel, and I know you guys feel it, that heaviness in your heart where it is not, you do feel ill at ease. You feel anxious, you feel stressed out, you feel sad, you feel depressed, you feel despondent, you feel hopeless. All of those things are coming from the devil. Between God and myself, between my neighbor and myself, there often stands a dark evil power. I know this by experience, surely, logically. Logically, this makes sense, doesn't it? the way that this is being laid out. Now listen to this part. The devil cunningly induces us instead of arousing us against himself. So he's really smart, right? The devil has been, this is what you have to understand about the enemy. The enemy is a non-human intelligence that is, you know, thousands of years old. It's much smarter than you. It has had the opportunity over time to study humanity. Not just that, but it's been studying you since you were born. It's been watching you, monitoring you, observing you, learning how to uh, get at you, right, in these subtle ways. Um, that's, this is so true. Uh, so he, instead of arousing us against himself, he cunningly induces us, he's very sneaky, to notice our neighbor's sins. That's where it starts of, oh, look at that other person. Don't look at yourself. Don't f reflect on your own sins and shortcomings, which are many, right? Oh, look at the, look at your neighbor's sins to make us spiteful and angry with others and to awaken our contempt towards them thus keeping us in enmity with them and with the Lord God himself. Now, that's really important because God commands us to love our neighbors. He also tells us to uh, love our enemies and to pray for people who are persecuting us because they are under this demonic deception and manipulation. That's why we pray for them because we know it is, it is the sin and not the sinner. They are being influenced uh, to do this. And so when we have this contempt towards our neighbor, our neighbor is made in the image of God, they're a child of God, by extension, we are putting ourselves at odds with the Lord himself. And so this is all very sneaky stuff. 
You know, you don't notice it because it just creeps up on you. The devil is just whispering these little things, wanting you to become envious of somebody. Oh, that person, look what they have. You work so hard. They don't work as hard as you, but they get this and they don't deserve it. Like they want you to feel that anger towards them. And I know you guys know this too. If you're somebody who is trying to walk the narrow path, trying to be somebody that is helpful, trying to uh, help bring, you know, glory to God on earth, you are going to experience these kinds of spiritual attacks. It's going to happen to you and you're going to experience these things. You know, you're going to experience rejection, uh, things like that, um, because they literally can't stand to be in the presence of somebody uh, whose light, whose light outshines their dar the darkness they have inside themselves which is, comes from the rejection of God and the rejection of Christ. Uh, therefore, we must despise the sins themselves and not our brother who commits them at the devil's prompting. Through infirmity and habit, we must pity him and gently and lovingly instruct him as one who forgets himself or who is sick as a prisoner and the slave of his sin. So, um... What Father John here is telling us is that there's times where we are the sinner, right? And we need God to forgive us. So we need to forgive our brother and understand that when these things are happening, it's the devil who is behind it, who is sowing this discord, this division, um, That and, and we hate the sin, not the sinner. Remember the enemy is incessantly seeking to destroy you and to tax you at the time when you least expect it. I know this has happened to you guys. It's happened to me recently. Um, and it'll be in a situation that you would least, the least thing you would expect, the last person you would expect, you know, the, the last thing you wanted to lose, whatever it is. That is, of course, when the devil strikes. His malice is infinite. Do not bind yourself by self-love and sensuality, lest they take you an easy prisoner. Know ye not your own selves, how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? Truly Christ dwells in me. Meanwhile, I have until now been a reprobate. I did not think. I was not Firmly convinced that the Lord is in me, it is he, the all-holy, that is so sensitive in me to the slightest impurity of heart. It is he who incites me to drive away from my soul the very germ of sin in the heart. But alas, Satan also is there, ready to devour me at every step and contest with God for me. That is happening for all of us, whether you know it or not. Satan is tr is constantly trying to provoke you, to test you, to say to the Lord, this is not, you know, he's mine, not yours. And, you know, he's constantly uh, falsely accusing you, you know. Um, and I think we all know that feeling, people call it a conscious, right? Your conscience, that is, that's God inside you, that little piece of God. Uh, as it says, that's Christ that dwells within you, that uh, that when, you know, you do something wrong, immediately wants to fix it. Um, the devil generally enters into us through a single lying idea or a single false thought or a single sinful desire of the flesh. And from this beginning, he works in us and troubles us. So he can get in through the smallest little thing. And then once he gets in, if you don't take the initiative to remove him, he will gain a foothold. Um, and from this beginning, he works on us all troubles. Uh, cannot, therefore, the Lord of all spirits enter into us also through a single thought, through true and holy love, and abide with us and be everything to us, and therefore pray undoubtingly, that is, simply in the simplicity of your heart, without a doubt, it ought to be as easy to pray as to think. You know, prayer is so important. It's important that you establish a conversation with God, and that your prayers are not about 
self-serving. I think for many Christians, like we wait to pray until something bad happens and then we're praying to God, you know, but when everything is going fine, it's like, well, where were we just to thank him, right? For everything to, to be grateful. You know, it's not like uh, some genie that you're going to rub the bottle and get wishes or something like your prayer shouldn't be about self-serving worldly things. It should be praying that you know, you can do God's will, uh, that God will uh, use you to do his will. Um, God does not tolerate the slightest momentary impurity in you and peace. God himself leaves you at once. If you admit any impure thought into your heart and you become the abode of the devil, if you do not at once renounce the sin, so important. Otherwise, it festers, it spreads like a cancer. So that every sinful thought, and still more, at every sinful word and deed, we must say, this is the devil. While at at every holy and good thought, word and deed, we should say, this is God. Meaning that when you do something good, it is not of your own accord, right? <laughs> our, our works are like dirty rags. It is through the glory of God. We should recognize that when we do good, it is, that's God, not us you know, uh, malice or the like that has taken root in your heart has a tendency in accordance with the infallible law of evil to discharge itself outwardly. This is why one usually says of an evil or angry man that he has vented his anger upon some person or object. We've all done it. I've done that to people who I care about, lashed out at them in the most vile way possible. Um, because the devil wants us to hurt the people we love the most. He doesn't want us to have fellowship with other Christians. He wants to break that. And, you know, this is my fault. Obviously, it's my error that I allowed it to happen. Uh, but, you know, we also can't, there's no point dwelling on the past. You have to ask for forgiveness and people can choose to forgive you or not. But in any way, you know, it doesn't help to to dwell on things that you can't change, right? You can only change things moving forward. You can make sure that that doesn't happen again, that you don't allow the devil to uh, possess you in such a manner that you would do that. Um, okay. <clears throat> it is the worst of evil that it does not rest in the heart, but attempts to diffuse itself outwardly. From this, it is evident the author of evil is himself great and rules over a great territory. It, yes, this is so true. Your evil, when people fall into wickedness, you can see how it wants to lash out and project its evil onto others and how, um, you know how they say misery loves company? It's sort of like it wants to drag you down to its level, and that's what the devil wants too. There is no doubt in the hearts of many people, the presence of the devil manifests itself by a kind of spiritual languor, exhaustion and sloth towards every good and useful work, especially works of faith and piety that require attentiveness and soberness of heart and towards spiritual work in general. Just look at this generation of people who are uh, turning to alcohol, to pharmaceuticals, who are in, uh, intoxicating themselves. They are not uh, able to be sober-minded and attentive or engage in, you know, real spiritual uh, battle because they're so weak. They, you know, they, they, they don't have the ability, the mental fortitude and the strength to withstand the onslaught of the devil's arrows, which are, and I know you guys, let me know in the comments if this happens to you. It happens to me every time I try to read scripture. I start yawning, I become tired, or there's things that try to distract me. All of it is trying to prevent my simply reading the word of God. And it's like, wow, <laughs> you know, you think at first it's just like, oh, I'm just tired. That's what it is. No, it is every time you try to engage in stuff like this that you become tired. Or I know when I'm reading something really uh, dense like uh, this one here, uh, the engraving of Christ and man's heart, that one is more 
academic in nature, I start falling asleep. You know, I could only handle certain bits at a time. And, and I think that's really what it is. Like, like they say that the fire in hell is God's love. It burns sinners, right? They can't handle it. It's too much for them, you know, beca because they are so in darkness and in their sin that the light is too much for them. At a time. That's why you can only do little bits at a time until you acclimate yourself to it, until you get out of the darkness and become accustomed to the light. Um, so thus he strikes the heart with languor and the intellect with dullness during prayer, with coldness and indolence when it is necessary to do good. For instance, to have compassion upon those who suffer, to help those who are in need, to comfort those who are in sorrow, to teach the ignorant, to guide the erring and wicked into the way of truth. So when you're trying to do good things, that's when he's going to attack you. That's when he's going to try to make you impatient, make you short with people. Uh, we constantly watch, we must constantly watch our heart. Not just watch your heart, I would say guard your heart. Drive away from it slothfulness and unfeelingness and see that it always burns with faith and love for God and our neighbor and is ever ready for every kind of labor and self-sacrifice for the glory of God and salvation of our neighbor, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. The devil also manifests his presence in our hearts by unusually violent irritation. I know everyone has experienced this. We sometimes become so sick with our own self-love that we cannot endure even the slightest contradiction. This is your pride. Any spiritual or material obstacle cannot bear a single harsh word. How many, I've gotten into fights with people I cared about because they had the audacity to tell me I was wrong and you know to, to try to humble me. It's that, it's pride. Pride especially afflicts people who believe that they are doing the Lord's work. You know, if you're a Christian, this is the often what you struggle with the most. You've struggled with the other passions, but then it comes to pride and you thinking that you're doing the right thing and therefore you must be good. No, you are not better than anybody else. You are just as bad of a sinner as the worst of them. Um, and that's what we need to remember. But this is this is what he does. That if you, if you can't, and this is why we also why I talk about narcissism on my channel because a lot of times narcissists are under this demonic influence and oppression. They themselves are hurting, and that is why hurt people hurt people. But then is the very time for endurance when the waters of malice and impatience reach, reach the depths of our souls. I know we've all had that feeling where we've been, we've just had enough of somebody. You know, we've felt like enough is enough. Uh, I deserve better. And you, you just, you want to lose your patience. And that is the devil though. What will become of a man when the devil lets in upon him the floods of his temptations and blows upon him with the wind of his snares? If the Christian stands firmly upon the rock, Christ, then he will not fall. But if he stands upon the sand of his own sophistry and passions, then great will be his fall. This is also why they say pride comes before fall. This is what was Eve's issue also in Adam's. Adam and Eve, the, the pride of wanting to experience the world through knowledge, right? Worldly knowledge rather than obeying God, which is what the tree is the allegory for, the choice to pursue secret knowledge or whatever it is that all these occult weirdos are also trying to look for. It is a rejection of the truth and of God. When you feel there is no peace in your heart through an undue care for anything earthly or worldly, remember that the world is dying. It is a fallen world that is on its way out and a new world is going to take its place. So keep that in mind. And that 
when there is uh, no peace in your heart through undue care for anything earthly or worldly, the world passing away, so why are you attached to anything here on a dying world, that the heart also breathes irritability and malice, and be at once on your guard. Do not let your heart be filled with this devilish fire. Pray fervently. Strengthen your heart by the power of God. Be firmly assured that the evil is kindled in your heart by the enemy. That is the enemy that is arousing your anger against people who you care about. You know, he, when, where mother is turned against daughter, daughter turned against father, brother against sister, there is the devil in the midst. Make, you know, wanting it to happen, encouraging it to happen, attacking people in the spiritual manner. Sometimes, just when we begin to delight in the Lord, the enemy at once himself or through human agents. Again, this is why I talk about narcissism on this channel. Who do you think are the human agents of the devil? Who do you think he sends to attack his uh, God's people? That's who. Uh, brings the greatest sorrow upon us, such as the lot of those who labor in this life for the Lord. For instance, you have just found peace and joy in the cup of the Lord, and at once after service you are sorely tempted and thereby afflicted. Even at the very cup, the enemy sets snares for you and disturbs you by thoughts that you must fight, again, thoughts that aren't your own, or else, knowing that you have wished for a long, long time to find rest in God, the enemy will not allow it. That, I know, that I've experienced that, where you literally just want to find peace in the Lord, and he is, the devil is constantly trying to attack your faith and hope in the Lord. As long as the old man lives and is not dead within us, that is the person you were before Christ. Until then, much sorrow must befall us from the struggles between the old man and the new. The new is the new person when you, you become when you put on Christ, you know, and you are born again in Christ. At the approach of a great festival, you must watch yourself with particular care. The enemy endeavors beforehand to chill your heart towards the subject, the event, celebrated, so that you will not honor it by wholeheartedly considering its reality. He acts upon us through the weather or through the food and drink we have taken. That's a big one through his own arrows, thrown plentifully at the heart and inflaming the entire man, at which time evil, impure, and blasphemous thoughts occur to us, and we, we feel thoroughly averse to the solemnity. We must overcome the enemy by forcing ourselves to meditate and pray devoutly. The devil is in the habit of attacking us when we are in strained circumstances. I, I know that from experience. We are a reed shaken with the devil's wind. The devil breathes his blasphemy into our hearts and at once we are shaken by it. We are disturbed, depressed, when we ought to despise his every blasphemy, not take any notice of it, looking upon it as a mirage. Which means you have to be aware enough to recognize when you're being attacked by him. You know, and most of us aren't. It's so subtle, like I said, you believe that these thoughts are your own. You believe that you came to this idea on your own or worse. You justify it by saying God put that in your heart to do it. God compelled you to do something awful, which is very sinful. Um, the next chapter on this talks about sin in general and its cure. If you want me to read the next chapter in a separate video, if you want me to continue reading from Spiritual Councils, I can. I just wanted to share this chapter. I know one of you uh, needed to hear it, and I, I suspect there's more of you who needed to hear it. I needed to reread it too, so why not share it with you guys? If this is something that you're enjoying, let me know, and we'll read through the rest of it because I feel like again this is so helpful to so many people out there who are also struggling I feel like a lot of us are going through a hard time right now a lot of people who are you know trying to do the right thing um 
uh, I've had a lot of people reach out to me about my videos and certain videos I've put up at certain times, you know, kind of unsure if I should put that out there. And I've had people message me and being like, you know, I'm really glad you put this out there. I had somebody email me recently talking about the video I did where I, I was saying that I'm not okay and I'm going through a lot. And that person said, you know, I've watched your videos before where you talk about the difficult childhood you had and like this, you know, traumatic childhood. And, and he was saying that for people like that who've experienced such, who've had such a hard life, that when something like this happens to you as an adult, um, it affects you more than like it would a normal person who didn't have that past. Like, I believe that that is true. I think it just opens up old wounds. Um, but needless to say, uh, all suffering is a blessing because through our suffering, we are able to get closer to God. I know I do and have, um, and th again, these things that don't kill us, it just makes us stronger. You know, we're learning more, we're honing our discernment, we're learning to guard our heart, we're learning to be less naive. None of these things are a bad thing, it's actually a blessing. And also, you don't know the future. Only God knows your beginning and your end. He exists outside of time and he can move in and out of it as he pleases, right? You know, um, he knows what's best for you. So you have to trust that if this happened, then it's happening for a reason and for my benefit. Ultimately, it is for my benefit. And that's it. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed that reading. I hope it was edifying for you guys and uplifting to know that there, that this is happening, number one, that, that like there's words to explain this feeling that you have felt your entire life where you know there's been times you felt this oppression, where you know you've said things you didn't mean and that thoughts were put into your head where somebody whispered in your ear, oh, don't trust that person. Somebody you know to be your friend. Oh, they're secretly out to get you. Oh, they secretly don't care about you. Who would want you to think that? Come on, you know the answer. Oh, but everybody says that he doesn't exist, right? Okay. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You know, there are a lot of things that exist outside the visual spectrum of like things we can see, but I can assure you the spiritual reality is real and everything that happens here in the material world is just a reflection of things that have already happened in the spiritual realm and they affect each other. So you this is why the bible tells us in ephesians that our enemy is not flesh and blood it is powers and principalities it is uh, evil forces in high places that is the enemy and that's what this is talking about so you know how the devil works anyways i hope that you guys have enjoyed it if you want me to read the next chapter on sin let me know in the comments and if you guys want me to i will all right that's it for now have a good day guys Whee!